So coming up later this year, of course, is going to be Dana White's Contender Series 2024. In fact, it is going to be starting August the 13th is when the first week is going to be. So I've been making videos about the best prospects in the world that I think should be in general signed to the UFC, but also prospects that should be on the Contender Series. I'm going to talk about the middleweight, and I feel like middleweight in general isn't a very deep division. The UFC's middleweight division isn't the strongest division out of the other ones. I mean, you look at welterweight and compare it to middleweight, there is a bit of a difference there, but I do think that in general, there is going to be a bit of a bolstering up in middleweight. I think the middleweights is definitely going to be looked at because we've got the ultimate fighter season, which I'm pretty confident is featherweights and middleweights. I could be wrong about that, but then of course, you've also got the contender series coming up, and I think we're going to see a lot of middleweights on the contender series. But the problem with middleweight, though, in general, is it's just not really a deep division. I feel like not only in the UFC, but everywhere, man. There's not really that many great middleweights. It almost feels like there's a little bit of like a gray area in weight classes where there's so many great welterweights, and there's a lot of great light heavyweights. Middleweights, though, not many of them. I can start off the video, though, by announcing a fight that is, I believe, confirmed. It's going to be Will Curry taking on Jordan Santos and this fight is going to be taking place I don't have a date for it on my little post-it note okay it's going to be taking place at some point anyway I would assume in week one or one of the earlier weeks word on the street is that Jordan Santos isn't very good I'll be honest he's actually not a guy that I had my eye on I did have Will Curry on my list though because since he lost to McStanton he's gone on a pretty decent run Word on the street is that Jordan Santos is, is going to lose. But honestly, I couldn't actually give you an early prediction because I'm not super familiar with him. Starting off, we're going to start off with the returning fighters, Torres Finney. Torres Finney, I believe, was rumored to be on the Ultimate Fighter season. His name wasn't announced as one of the fighters, so I'm not too sure what he's getting up to. Maybe he's just going to come back to the, to, to the Contender Series. Who knows, but that's what I've got him doing. I think Torres Finney is really fun. He's a fun wrestler. He picks people up. He slams them on the ground. He beat Yuri Panfrov, and the fight wasn't super competitive. And Dana White didn't want to sign him. And I'm kind of thinking to myself, why not? He's five foot eight and absolutely massive, as you can see kind of in his photo. He picks people up, slams them on the ground. Why did the UFC not sign him? They should sign him in round two or in the second fight. Another fighter that did win on the Contender Series last year but wasn't signed was Marco Tulio. He actually went out there and beat former glory kickboxer Yusri Balgari. And Yusri Balgari, in my opinion, just disappointed me. I'll be honest, Marco Tulio beat him, didn't make it that fun, and he has had a lot of fun fights in his career. He then won one more fight, and since he's coming off a win, and he was coming off a win on the Contender Series, I think the UFC would be doing him a little bit of a disservice. He also trains out of shooter box Diego Lima, which is, of course, Charles Oliveira's, Charles Oliveira's gym as well as Alvis Brenner's gym, and Daniel Santos, and Felipe dos Santos, and all of Charles Oliveira's minions train at that gym. Marco Tulio, if he dyed his hair blonde, could maybe become a Charles Oliveira minion himself in the UFC. Matij Pinyaz needs to be on the season. Needs to be. 9-1, I know his one loss did come to Cedriques Dumas, but Matij Pinyaz, former kickboxer. He's quite good at kickboxing, you know. He uh, fought for glory, lost to Donovan Weiss, but Donovan Weiss is pretty good. He should be on the contender series again. He just knocked out Matthew Bonner. I don't think anyone is finishing Matthew Bonner aside from Pinaz. He got submitted by Cedriques Dumas, which is a pretty bad loss. It hasn't aged well, but one of the better strikers, I feel like, if he was signed to the UFC, would become Matej Pinaz. And then you could do really fun fights like Matej Pinaz versus Cesar Almeida. I know this will be throwing him in the absolute deep end, but if Cesar Almeida manages to beat Roman Kopilov, you probably could do Rob Roman Kopilov versus Matej Pinyaz. There's fun fights to be made with him. He's a really good striker. Kaik Brito lost last year at welterweight, and he's moved up to middleweight. I don't know if that was just for a one-off fight. I'm going to assume it probably was just a one-off fight, but if he's going to stay at middleweight, he would be fun. He's a former octagon champion. Lost to Oban Elliott in an in a, in a embarrassing, a embarrassing performance. Embarrassing. He should be embarrassed. Yuri Panfrov also lost last year, but he's got a win, and the UFC seems to like him because I think he trains at a Ciro, Ciro Longo MMA. He was on Dana White's looking for a fight where he beat this guy called Davis Aracio Jr. Lost to Torres Finney. Has won since then, and he trains at Ciro Longo, so I guess Matt Ciro vouches for him. A very legitimate prospect, though, is Azamat Bakoev. Azamat Bakoev has beaten guys that are 
I think in the UFC right now, I mean, he beat Dylan Budka, who is in the UFC right now, and I think he's got another win over someone that's in the UFC, but I could be wrong, and I am wrong, but never mind, he did just beat Lucas Fernando, who himself was on the contender series last year, and lost to Cesar Almeida, anyway, Azamar Bakoev, 17-3, decent fighter, beat Dylan Budka, who's in the UFC, fights at American top team, so, is that, that's DC's gem, isn't it, so D Daniel Cormier absolutely loves this guy, probably has a wet spot in his pants every time he sees Bakoev go for a takedown, Bakoev, he's boring, he's really boring, so if he was to get a, uh, into the UFC, he would probably have to get a finish on the contender series, but even then, a 17-3 and three record at middleweight is nothing to laugh at. Virgil Ulgin, the UFC needs more middleweights, and they need more fighters from France. 6-0, I was going to say decent competition, not good competition whatsoever, but he has beaten Henrique Shigemoto, who has, dude, this guy's fun, Sugimoto, he was on the contender series, he was, against Alaskiev Kizriev, anyway, Virgil Organ beat that guy, Alaskiev Kizriev beat him, let's just put him on the contender series, he's from France, the UFC needs more French fighters, Eric McConico is on an absolute tier right now, he's 8-2, but he did just beat Tyler Ray, and I thought Tyler Ray was going to go on and become something of himself, and before that, he beat the former UFC fighter, Maki Patolo, and not only that, he knocked him out, in the third round does have a couple losses earlier on in his career but he's now on a pretty solid win streak over solid competition as well was meant to fight elias urbina who i believe i believe is the brother of gilbert urbina but i could be wrong anyway that fight didn't happen i think that you should put this guy in the contender series because he has beaten a couple very good guys recently diego diaz is 17 and 5 he's from brazil and he has been fighting not at LFA recently, but he did lose to Carlos Leal, who's actually a free agent right now, so the UFC should also sign him, but four fight win streak, not over the best guys, the UFC needs, needs middleweights, and Diego Diaz is an experienced middleweight. Andreas Bro Gustafsson, he's the brother of, Ale of Alexander Gustafsson, where was I going with that? Anyway, Gustafsson, Cool surname, uh, well-known surname, uh, once again, not signed to an exclusive contract at the moment, hasn't had the most success in his career, but I mean, it would be really cool to have him in the UFC, of course, he's 33, so it's now or never, and another fighter which it's now or never for to make a run into the UFC is Ben Johnson, because Ben Johnson is only 5-1, and one, but he's 33 years old, so this guy can't wait around for two more years, he's got to be on the contender series this year, four wins by submission, and most of them are in the first or the second round. Has one loss to a pretty good prospect in Caleb Brideout, who's a welterweight now, I think. Beat John Martin Fraser, who has been doing things on the Australian regional scene for a bit. Beat... <sighs> Beat the New Zealander Brogan Anderson, but... But, 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 Ben Johnson got the revenge. He actually trains at a city kickboxing, apparently. I didn't actually know that. I thought he trained in um, Australia. Either way, Ben Johnson put him on there. Mario Mangage, once again, the UFC wants more fighters from Italy. I don't actually know if they want more fighters from Italy, but in my opinion, it just makes sense because they've been talking about going to Italy. He's 6-0. Most of his wins come by submission. He hasn't had a very good amateur career, but once again, he's just cleaning out the local Italian scene. He's now on Cage Warriors. Makes sense to me. Jose Galindo, I mean, this, this photo doesn't fill you with a lot of confidence, does it? But... Once again, he's dominating the regional scene over there in Peru. That sign of it. That's literally it. Honestly, I'll be honest. I really struggled to find good middleweight prospects this year. I trust that the UFC is probably going to find more than me because they're probably going to need to. I'll be honest. I mean, they found like... That's another thing as well that annoyed me. Jonathan Ramsey and Mark Holm were both on my list. And the UFC took them. They took them for the ultimate fighter. So a few of those guys that are on tough were actually on my list. And Torres Finney was meant to be on tough, but he's not. So I know it's shorter, but trust me, there's not that many middleweights out there unless they really wanted to go down the Russian route. But I don't know. I don't know what they're really going to do for middleweight this year. I'm sure there's so many more guys in the US that I just don't know about. I'm sure there's so many guys that I've forgotten about. If you know any good middleweight prospects, please let me know in the comments. I do apologize. That was a very short list. But anyway... I'll see you guys for the light heavyweights, which is going to be fun. And the heavyweights. I found a lot of heavyweights this year. A lot of really good heavyweight prospects have popped up out of absolutely nowhere.